Hi, I'm Rochford, and I want to thank you for watching Music News. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, Rochford. Yes, great sir. To see you. You just played the very intimate album launch show here, twice in a lifetime, at the Arts Club. Has yeah. it been a long time coming? It has been a long time coming, you know. I've, uh, I was very excited about tonight. The idea of just, uh, I guess, reintroducing in a way to a lot of people that haven't followed me over the years or don't, you know, don't know what I've been up to and where I'm at present day. You know. I mean, the vocals are definitely still there. Do you still feel fighting fit musically? Definitely. I still feel creative and I still feel emotionally driven to say something in a song. Because that's the big thing. If you don't have that fire, you know, it, then it, nothing's happening, you know. Absolutely. I mean, the yeah. first time I saw you was supporting the Godfathers, 1988, the Town Country Club. The who? Forum, the Godfathers. Oh my God. <laughs> 88. I think yeah. It was a while back. Do you still have good memories of those sort of early shows, the early days? I remember those days supporting people like the Christians yeah. and uh, Terence and Derby. Uh, I remember them fondly, you know. I mean, I'm very much a living and now type of guy, but. Those things are great nostalgia for me. Those things. I mean, yeah. on the album you're joined by Amy Winehouse band members and producer Jimmy Hogarth. How did that all come about? Um, it's kind of came about, like Jimmy Hogarth was introduced to me through the record company, uh, BMG, uh, and I actually knew some of the guys from Amy Winehouse's band. Oddly enough, she's used some of the decisions I've used in the beginning and it's almost like we swapped over the years and sense. yeah 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 and uh, I was doing I was on tour and th they were doing her band were doing an a remembering Amy tour and we just got talking um, with my some of my old pals and and then coincidentally they knew Jimmy end up in the studio so yeah. incredible I mean tell us about the I mean great show tonight by the way it was superb started off with High on Love yes what was that about High on Love was one of the first songs that we wrote on the album because I wasn't sure what kind of album I was going to make. I knew it wanted to be a like kind of solely record, but I didn't know whether it would be accessible in a radio type of way. But when we wrote that song, I wrote it with uh, Shelley Poole and uh, from Alicia's Attic and a guy called um, Pete Hamilton. And the combination of our energies, you know, it just it just something happened. And I said, I always like like Womack and Womack. Um, Teardrops, that kind of thing where it's on the surface quite a happy, clappy pop song, but actually there's a lot more to it. It's actually quite a sad song, Teardrops. Um, clue in the title, and it was just, and it's Southern Soul. Um, it has to have soul for me to do it. It has to have some kind of soul somewhere. I mean, Beverly Knight joins you on what we had. Mm. Missed it tonight, unfortunately. <laughs> but, yeah. I, you know, did you always have her in mind? Yeah, it was Beverly Knight tonight. See what I did there? Um, she, I've always wanted to, to sing and work with her and we've always crossed paths over the years uh, and I don't know why it hasn't happened. She covered one of my songs which was pretty close. Might as well go the whole way and sing on the same record together. And, and, uh, <coughs> excuse me. and we approached her and she said yeah. She came to the studio, literally the first take was like because she is an amazing singer, yeah, yeah. amazing voice, amazing singer, and warm, warm soul. I love her. There's mutual respect there, I think. I mean, you've written for Michael Jackson, Joss Stone, Jack and Carl, and much loads of others. How was this album writing process for you? Well, I didn't actually write for Michael. I was asked to, but it's a long story. But um, I have been asked for a lot by a lot of people who I grew up listening to, or they've told me how much they like my songwriting, which is like, wow, you know, these are my heroes. Why didn't you write them? Uh, it was, a, it was a, an issue with my management. It was a technical oh, issue, okay. you know. Nothing to do with Michael because, I mean, who wouldn't do that in their <laughs> right mind, you know? Anyhow, um, on this album, the writing process was pretty much, once I got an idea where, where it was, because the album tells you where it wants to go. So you start off writing, but you don't know quite what you're doing, and then all of a sudden 
you get that and then it was just a flow happening and working with Jimmy Hogarth the producer who also co-wrote some songs on the record it was just you know it was lovely as well to work in his studio which is like all vintage stuff tape machine we did it like that with live musicians like a band playing and it was pretty much back to the old school but still you know with a contemporary mindset you know loved it how long was that process well it was on and off because i've been touring in mike and the mechanics uh, of course, yeah. it was kind of in between touring with them and doing my thing so i mean it took a while to get it together but in a year top to tail it was done you know I mean, that's a comfortable relationship as well with Mike and the mechanics I mean that's been a long-term thing yeah right, man you love it oh I love it I love working <laughs> with those guys love working with Mike and the band became we've come it become like family it's uh, it's like having friends and being on the road in the studio it's like a learning curve because Mike it's coming from a little bit it's the same thing in a way but from a different angle to a different window yeah. and we kind of connect on some level that we understand you know each other and I understand what he's trying to get and it's different from what I do in a sense but I get it you know I love it and you're not a superstitious man then. superstitious <laughs> 13 songs on the album Oh, I'm not. around, and I, you know what? I pulled out a few albums. I don't know why it mattered today. I couldn't really find any. There's a couple, a couple of great albums, but you know, they didn't never cross your mind. Thirteen. Thirteen songs. Never crossed my mind. The first time I went to a hotel in America, and there was no floor thirteen, twelve, fourteen. I was like, really? <laughs> I can't believe people are that superstitious. You know, I mean. I don't get it really. I think it's it's something that's been perpetuated. I think initially maybe some pagan thing when I did, and people are taking it somewhere else. But no, I'm not. Good, good. I mean, and congratulations by the <laughs> way on the MBE services to music. Thank you very much. Did that just come out of the blue for you? Well, there's a song on the Mechanics album called Out of the Blue, and it did. I thought maybe because I know Mike's quite connected. I thought maybe it was something to do with him, but he had no idea. So then it left me at a loss because I was at home, letter comes through and I looked at this letter and it looked very official and I was like, worried? I was worried, you know, I was thinking I'm going to jail for something, I don't know, what did I do? And so I left it for a little bit and eventually I opened it and it was just like, you know, you've been honored by the Queen, would you accept? And I was just like, so my mum came over and with my brother and my cousin and we went to the palace and uh, we accepted it and I was like it's surreal but lovely you know to be acknowledged sometimes you know I don't do it for that because I love music and I love giving that to people and sharing that but every now and again a little medal or a little award or a big one in this case I love it. Okay. Mm. Do you always have a clear vision of what you're, you're going for, what you want to achieve? Mostly mostly I have a clear vision sometimes I don't but I don't panic when I'm kind of going Okay, so what now? What am I, you know? Um, but of late, I've been focused. When I was younger, I was finding my way in the business, you know? Starting out, just trying to understand. Because at that point, I just wanted to, my only vision was play music and write songs. And whatever else. And then I wrote Cuddly Toy, and all of a sudden I was playing my music in front of a lot of people, and it was a whole different animal. And then I had to start thinking, okay, so what do I, what do I want to do here, you know? Because it's not just about playing music. It, it has to have a destination to it. And I do have destinations now. I mean, you look great. I mean, I remember 32 years ago, you just looked like you were made to play music. I know you've been playing for a long time. Yeah. I mean, when did you start? When did I start? Playing. When, when did it grab you, the musical uh, bug? I came out of the womb singing, man. <laughs> Actually, no, that was crying, to be honest with you, but four, eight, four years old, my mum started me with piano lessons at four because I showed an interest. When kids start showing an interest, yeah, yeah, I think so. They really show a real, you can tell the ones that, oh no, that's something special, that's something, they're really into that, you know. So from four years old, started working, I got my first sort of paycheck for music at 14. I was gigging with my uncle and his band in the West End and in pubs around. And that's where I kind of learnt the trade, so to speak. Uh, and music, jazz, blues, everything 
My uncle taught me a lot, man. Right. I mean, who were your, who do you look up to, musical heroes in the past? What's... So many, so many. Most of the Motown artists. Yeah, whether it be Marvin Gaye, Stevie Wonder, Al Green, I love, Donny Hathaway, um, anyone, Joni Mitchell. It's actually quite a crazy, I just like people who move me with their music or their lyrics and you can tell when they have that special magic about them in their music. There's people who are kind of good, but people who have got that magic, you know, and I look for that magic always. And the current yeah. music scene, do you see, see that little bit of magic somewhere? Yeah, there's a, there's a bit around, there's Adele has the magic, uh, Leon, uh, Leon, uh, what's his last name? Yeah. Leon, oh my god, <laughs> so terrible. It's a kid from like Texas and his first name is Leon and after has a mental block. I like Michael Kimanuka, you know, he's uh, alternative in a way but he's just got that magic about him again, yeah. Listen, thanks a lot for your, uh, for your time, it's been a pleasure. For, for somebody that hasn't come across you yet, crazy as that sounds, what three songs would you say? What, say again? What, what three songs would you say out of your repertoire? You know, check these out, these sort of sum me up as an artist. Get the new record for starters. <laughs> Absolutely. For starters. I can guarantee that. You know that. Um, only to be with you. I don't know. Uh, Ride the storm. But there's, to be honest with you, there's so many that, because it's to get a full picture of who I am, I guess. But those are good to start with. Fantastic. Mm. Thank you very much. Anything else you'd like to say to the music news uh, viewers out there? I love you all. I'll see you at the gigs, hopefully, you know, doing it and doing it. And as long as you are feeling it, I'll be doing it, you know, that's it. Fantastic, thank you yeah. very much. Cheers. Pleasure.